Sometimes it's not the video you want to make, but the video you gotta make. Today we're talking again about Fallout 76, which just a few days ago received a pretty big expansion in Atlantic City, which adds two new expeditions, a brand new season's worth of content, and on top of that, you could also start a new character and just leapfrog the level 20. I was actually pretty excited about this for a number of reasons. Number one is that Atlantic City looked like this hybrid between Fallout New Vegas and Far Harbor. Fallout New Vegas being naturally one of my favorite Fallout games, and then Far Harbor being one of my favorite ever Fallout expansions. I really like the sound of this hybrid here, seeing all of the slots and mini games that you could do, while at the same time, new enemy types, new assets being pumped into the game. I was really liking where they were headed. It was also some of the promises made by the developers, that they had, quote, so much content that they had to split up the release of Atlantic City into two parts. So naturally, diving into this major update, I was very much looking forward to it. And I'm not just saying that, because the last time I talked about a major update for Fallout 76 was with Nuka World on tour. And it was there I said, more of this. It felt like they got the loot right. It felt like they got the weapon damage balancing right. It felt like... Things were heading in the proper direction. If this was a symbol of what the next update would be like for Fallout 76, then we were in good hands and that the game could finally get to the right place. Let me make one thing clear before I really get into the thick of it. Fallout 76 Atlantic City is a lot of what I was afraid was going to happen, which is, okay, I'm lowering my guard a little bit, even though back in July I made a video of me just playing the game in real time and the AI broke in front of me. I'm lowering my guard in real time. I'm stepping in, and I'm going to give you some trust here that this is going to be pretty all right. And it just, on a technical level, still isn't up to snuff. And even though there are problems I had that have been ameliorated, there are new problems that I have to talk about. And so as this product evolves more and more, it's fascinating to cover it from before launch to now to see how still there are core issues there that have been there since launch. And the ones that do get fixed, they introduce new ones. So we'll talk about all of that today in this little review. If you're new here, you're into Fallout news, information, conversations, you're in the right place, consider subscribing. Like I said, really excited getting into this, especially with the Fallout TV show trailer we got. Firing this game up, there was this sense of, okay, I'm like, it's good to be back in the world of Fallout with something new, a place to explore. This is going to be great. Now, for those who have not played Fallout 76 The Pit, that's where expeditions were first introduced. For those unaware, you'd have to do a little bit of a quest line to unlock the ability to go and do an expedition. And from there, you would travel to these new locales where it would be massive arenas effectively that would have tons of enemies shooting at you. You'd be shooting back at them and no real questing or meaningful exploration. Now, the step forward that Fallout 76 Atlantic City makes is that you're still being dropped into these massive locations that are just shooting galleries and nothing more. And I mean, nothing more. But on the way, you can stop and smell the roses a little bit. Unfortunately, this is where the game's design just hurts itself so much. One example is during the tax evasion expedition. It's here that you're going to be helping out a little mafioso and you're going to head inside a casino. I'm like, all right, the New Vegas vibes are real. And you can actually play some of the slots mini games. It's not as like interactive as New Vegas. We're going to be playing poker and blackjack, all this fun stuff, right? But you still got some mini games here. I'm like, okay, cool. I can get down with a little interaction. But at the same time as doing this, enemies are constantly spawning all around you. And this isn't a problem just with this section here, but the whole entire expedition. The main issue here is that it's taking me away from a little fun thing I want to do on the side for a few minutes before I go screw off and do the rest of the quest. For example, when I was trying to figure out how to do the first part of this expedition, you have to take conspicuous assets and throw them into vehicles. Now, at first I'm picking it up and I'm trying to figure out, do I drop it from my inventory? How do I do this? Turns out it's equipped to your grenade slot and you have to actually throw them in there, which it looks as hilarious as it sounds, but you know what? It works. From there, though, this whole time I'm trying to figure this out, I'm like, well, let me clear out these enemies so I can, you know, go ahead and take my time and, and figure out the next step here. And they just kept spawning. And when I started to ignore them, they continued to spawn. And eventually the screen is full of tons of enemies. Perhaps to make things worse, though, is that after I go through all of that, which, you know what, it's Fallout 76 is kind of a known quantity. Like, this is about how I expected things to go, and that doesn't make it okay. But, like, all right, it's sort of like having a messy room and knowing where everything is going to be within the messy room. So you're okay with the mess. So then I go inside the casino, and when I go inside there everyone's naked including enemies enemies are not engaging with me at all i can't progress the quest whatsoever 
and at one point I held the A button because I wanted to get out of my power armor since it was out of juice and I wanted to put a new fusion core in there. And then I literally couldn't play the game at all. Like I literally got locked up. I couldn't even pause the game. So I had to tab out and force close the game. And this is what I mean by how Fallout 76 defeats itself, because as you'll see throughout this review, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about the content or the world space or the lore even. I think a lot of this is actually really cool. It's just that on a technical level, it's pretty astounding how continuously broken this game is. Yet if you go online and you read the Twitter replies or the Reddit threads, the consistent argument is that, oh, it's bounced back. And in many ways it has. If you go look at my channel's history, you know I was one of the biggest advocates for Fallout 76 Wastelanders. I heavily supported Nuka World on Tour as the new direction for this series in the terms of updates. I really do think there are a lot of good parts about 76 now. I just feel we're ignoring the bad because we're kind of used to it. Stuff like this shouldn't still be happening to such an egregious extent. It shouldn't be that every single time I hop into this game, it's breaking on me. It's been unacceptable, we've made that clear, but I think to just excuse it because a lot of hardcore 76 fans are into it and act like this is the norm, this is the huge, isn't truly acceptable and that we should be expecting better from Bethesda. Now, I know some think that sometimes I'm a little hard on this game or I intentionally hate on this game and I need to make it clear that like I'm here to try to love this thing. The reason I keep coming back to it is not because it's a content well, my 76 videos don't do that crazy well like talking about more modern stuff does much better for me so I'm going in here because I'm a Fallout fan and I love this series and what I can compliment Fallout 76 Atlantic City on are actually the visuals artistically the way they've captured some of these locales you know I'm gonna be real like New Jersey uh, as a New Yorker you know not my not my favorite place on planet earth but you know we drive through there from time to time and when I heard that they were making a a post-apocalyptic version of that I went well that's that's gonna be easy I'm sorry if you're from New Jersey. Anyway, in all seriousness, uh, I was not really sure what to expect here, but from the boardwalk to the casinos to even an aquarium I was walking through, the retro futurism was real. The Far Harbor to New Vegas inspiration was strong. I really felt like artistically they captured this well. And this doesn't surprise me too much because one of my favorite things about Fallout 76 is the world space. I think the world space, the locations, the artistic direction, is fantastic and one thing that's been added here into Fallout 76 Atlantic City that I gotta give credit to is the music. Pain is the greatest friend to laugh with. This jazzy noir kind of theme playing in the background absolutely sets the tone for what is a fantastic place to explore and that's what makes it hurt a little bit more. The feel, the tone, and the atmosphere are there, which if you know my love of the Fallout series, and especially my love of Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, you know I love good atmosphere, right? That goes a pretty long way with me, especially in the likes of Fallout 3, which has probably the strongest atmosphere of a game I have played. And so when you can't fully immerse yourself in that because you're either getting hoarded by a crazy amount of enemies, which is part of the expedition, or if there's no breaks to just stop and smell the roses after taking out that horde of enemies, I feel like the experience kind of betrays itself. But that is what it is at the end of the day. I'm not gonna argue with what expeditions are. I'm just going to fight for what I think they can evolve into, which is a little bit of both. I can't help but think while I'm playing this game, how cool it would be to just have Atlantic City be this hub that you get dropped off into, and that there are new multiple quests on this map that you can go and explore, like the aquarium being this location that a dungeon is housed in, that the casino is just a home for picking up quests, interacting with NPCs, and playing the occasional minigame. And fortunately, my wishes seem to be coming true because this is a two-part update, which is part of the problem here that I'll get into. Part two is gonna be exactly that, free roam in a new location with some quests and also one expedition. Now, while I think expeditions could still have more exploration, Bethesda did say at the top of all this that the reason they're splitting it up into two updates is because they feel they have so much content, they need to spread it out. When playing this new update, the expeditions take maybe an hour or two each, and then you're kind of done with the new stuff. This feels like a stopgap for the main attraction, which is going to be update part two with the open world stuff. 76 needs a massive content drop because the last time they got that, in my opinion, was Fallout 76 Wastelanders, where it felt meaty and meaningful. You couldn't believe how they had overhauled the map, added a 15 hour quest line or up to 20, depending on how much of the roses you decided to smell along the way. 
Since then, it's been little pockets of three to four, sometimes five hour updates, which is good and all, but it's so far spread apart. So identifying the issue of lack of content in certain times, but making it more meaningful, it feels like they're kind of losing a window here where Atlantic City Part 1 should have been the open explorable area because that's starting with your best foot forward if possible and then adding the expeditions on top of that as supplemental content. It feels like a misunderstanding of what Fallout fans have always loved about, well, modern Fallout. It's about going from point A to point B, those distractions along the way, those NPCs and so on and so forth. So consider me excited for part two, no doubt about it, because of how I'm feeling walking out of part one. But it feels like things were done in reverse here. And while I'm not going to complain about the fact that eventually we're going to get what we want, I just think for the health of a live service game, again, it's important to put your best foot forward. But I think I've said enough on that front. Let's talk a bit about damage balancing, because the last time I talked about expeditions with the pit, you may or may not remember how I lost my mind over this. It was unbelievable to me that at that point in the game's life cycle, that 76 had yet to really figure out damage balancing, that this was still a major issue, that I was pumping enemies full of lead and having to reload my gun 40 times just to take out one enemy. Some people have critiqued me, your level's low, bro. But here's the thing. I think they actually listened to the feedback because in Fallout 76's Atlantic City Expeditions, I think the balancing is done so much better, not only in damage output, where I was doing these expeditions no problem by myself, which I think is a amazing step forward, but also that the enemies were dropping a ton of stim packs, a ton of ammo for the weapon I was using. It felt like it should have been all the way back at launch. It feels very in tune to what I'm playing. I don't feel scared in these expeditions to run out of ammo. And then just like in the pit, well, I'm out of ammo and I'm already in here by myself. So now if I leave, I gain nothing and I lose everything. Here it feels much more fine tuned and tested. Back to the critical front though, the writing. Um, 76, you know, you don't go for the best writing, but since it's the current only standing video game representation for the Fallout franchise, I hope that we can get back on track here. Is it cool to have a not voice protagonist? Yes. Uh, but these characters just aren't clicking. You'll meet interesting ones like the twins at the boardwalk. And these twins are kind of interesting in how they use the stealth boy to attack you. And you're participating in a game where they're looking for a set of rivals. Like the setup is actually pretty cool here. But the dialogue and the delivery of such just doesn't click fully with me like I hope it would. And I feel like that's because in these expeditions, it's centered around a small cast of characters, unlike what you love about a Fallout game where you'll be roaming a locale and even the most random NPC can have an interesting story to tell or the favorite story that's told to all of us is the location you explore, the lore you find within it. So Atlantic City does present a lot of pros. And I think especially as a new player, the fact that you can just hop in and scale up to 20 and kind of get right into the thick of things is partially an admission that the early game of 76 kind of stinks, but also a great quality of life enhancement that I am not going to sit here and tell you is a bad thing because I think this is a good step in the right direction. That said, the AI still breaks frequently and you'll see multiple times here the occasional T pose, enemies not interacting with me properly or even attacking me. I mean, the fact that I did this whole inconspicuous asset delivery section of the mission while I had probably 12 enemies surrounding me and not just shooting at me at all, but just following me is a testament to how busted the AI in this game still is. And if you keep up with my coverage, you saw back in July that things are still looking pretty rough in that department. And not to drag Starfield into this, but this is one of my main complaints about that game when I reviewed it, that Bethesda's handling of AI needs desperate improvement. And so yeah, Fallout 76 Atlantic City still has a lot of those core issues, but as I mentioned at the start of all this, it introduced a host of new problems. But I have to say this, when I walked away, I wasn't like, oh man, that stunk, that was disappointing, I'm mad here, as I'm sure you can tell by my tone with this. It's more like an encouragement of, hey, like you're close, you're very, very close, and I hate to be that guy and say, like, not close enough though, because I know part two's on the way, but I just feel like, you're almost there with these ideas. I feel like expeditions are there. And what my big fear is, is that without a shadow of a doubt, based off the leaks, one of these expeditions is gonna take us back to a place that we are very familiar with, like your capital wasteland, your commonwealth. It's gonna do the nostalgia grab, the Mojave. 
They're going to do it. No doubt about it. There's too much money to let that go. So this is why now with Atlantic City Part 2 and whatever's up next, I just hope at first, mind you, I know this is coming regardless in Part 2. I hope at first, though, Bethesda makes this more open and more explorable and uses the expeditions as additive-based content because I could see some hopping in and going, oh, it's just a little mission and that's it. I'm out. And now you've lost a potential new player because... They thought they were getting Atlantic City and they got an expedition, which is just a shooting gallery, when if you gave them actual open world exploration like you're doing in part two, that would have been better. If this means that these two expeditions and the quality of life enhancements get delayed until that's all ready to go because it's not ready right now, that's fine. 76 had a pretty barren year. I don't know if a couple of months would actually kill things if you waited till say around the Fallout TV show to drop this update, where then you get a huge surge of players with one of the most meaningful updates to the game in years. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I leave it to you. Have you played Fallout 76 Atlantic City? If so, what are your thoughts on this expansion? Do you feel it's in the right area? Do you feel like there were other quality of life improvements that overshadowed your complaints? Or were you disappointed? Let me know down below. Other than that, take excellent care of yourselves and I'll see you next time around. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the heck out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.